Hello, friends. I hope you're going to join me tonight. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. So jump on um, line on Facebook and, and join me. I'm going to open in prayer. I have had this stirring in my heart. And anytime I teach or speak on spiritual warfare, things tend to happen. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. So please join your heart with me as I go before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, God above, Father, you know what you have put on my heart tonight to speak on. You know, Father, the importance of training one another in spiritual warfare. God, we know that the enemy does not want this. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this room, over myself, over Facebook, and all the friends that will see it now and will join later. God, I ask you to protect each one of us. I ask you to send your holy angels to guard, protect, and minister to us. Father, I ask you that you push back the forces of evil that try to hinder, harm, or hurt any one of us. God, we trust you. You alone are worthy to be praised. Tonight, Father, we ask you, Holy Spirit, come. We ask you, Father, to envelop this place with your spirit, that your word goes forth to accomplish the very things you have set for it to accomplish. God, I ask you to touch each one of my sisters that will hear this message. I ask you to give them wisdom beyond wisdom. I ask you to give them discernment that they do not know they have. God, I ask you to protect their families. I ask you to teach them to be warriors on behalf of your kingdom. And God, we will worship you and praise you because you and you alone are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, friends, I know this is an important, important topic. Um, it's so important that um, as I just announced today that I was going to be teaching on spiritual warfare, I had at least two attacks that came my way out of the blue, just out of the blue. Now, you know, sometimes you think, well, what is a spiritual attack? What does that even mean? What does it mean? What is spiritual warfare? You know, oftentimes we don't understand what spiritual warfare is, and I'm here to help you understand it tonight. I hope that I can take you to a new level of understanding. I'm sure you know things that will help me and I know things that will help you. And between each of us, we can help each other. And that's the way we're supposed to do is we're supposed to build one another up and encourage one another. And to start tonight, I really, I'm going to, I've got a lot of information as usual to cover. And so if you can stick with me, I do not have notes, but what I do have is I have scriptures written down and I can possibly post the notes later. I want you to comment in the comment line. I want you to ask questions if you do not understand something. I want you to respond um, if I say something that you've been thinking about or something that you've been questioning. So let's start right away. Spiritual warfare. God said in his word, he said this, he said, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. That's Jeremiah 33, 3. Do you, friends, believe that if you call on God that he will tell you things that you do not know? How important is spiritual warfare? Listen, friends, Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus, we are supposed to be able to see things that others do not see. We're supposed to know things that others do not know. We're supposed to understand things that others do not understand. Now, why do I say that? Because the Holy Spirit in you is our God and our teacher, and he teaches us things we do not know. So we have to start with the premise 
that God speaks to his people through the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's an inward witness. Sometimes you know that God is speaking to you simply by a nudge. He nudges you. And sometimes you know God is speaking to you because in the word, as it is written in his word, um, it's like a light bulb comes on and you have a revelation. You have an understanding of scripture that you did not have prior to that time. And you can even read the same scriptures over and over and over again, but because of revelation, that God shares with his people, he will give you a deeper understanding of a certain scripture that really the word of God says, once you have that revelation, it is for you and your children. Friends, how important is it for us to be spiritually discerning people? And that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about spiritually discerning. Can you discern things in the spirit? Uh, the word of God tells us that we advance in our ability to have spiritual discernment when we practice righteousness and practice in training our senses to discern between good and evil. So friends, listen, to train ourselves is a matter of putting the word of God in. And as we train ourselves, our senses become more alert to the things of the spirit. Now, you know, I, I can I can teach this because I have lived it. And I, I'm hoping that you will get a greater understanding. The word of God is true in that it says the solid food is for the mature because of practice, they have trained their senses to discern good and evil. So I wanna ask you, have you, are you, have you and are you training your senses to discern good and evil? Well, first of all, if you do not know what the Bible says, then it's very difficult to train your senses according to scripture. You have to know according to scripture what is good and what is evil. Today, we live in a world that um, people will tell you because it's politically correct what is good and what is evil. And if you listen to the world, it's literally upside down. So the world is not our measure and our thoughts are not our measure. The word of God is our measure. So spiritual warfare, now listen, it can be coming at you, an attack from the from external attack, or it can be internal. It can be in you. And just to give an example, you know, there's been times when I have fought issues of fear uh, to the point of pa being paralyzed by fear. That is when the spiritual battle is internal because of thoughts that I believe. There's times when I have had external battles that I've had to fight. An example of that is just out of the blue, People that love you and know you, all of a sudden they turn against you. You didn't do anything, you didn't say anything, you haven't changed anything, yet you find that these good friends are no longer your friends. That's an example of a spiritual battle, and there's something behind that, there's something underlying. So as we're looking at scripture tonight, I want you to think about this. Are you fighting a spiritual battle externally? Are you fighting a spiritual battle internally? Are you fighting a spiritual battle externally? Are you fighting a spiritual battle internally? And what I have found is oftentimes it's both. Oftentimes it's both. You can be warring inside because the word of God says that our, that our spirit and our flesh war against each other. It also you know, clearly shows that there is warfare that comes that is simply an onslaught of the attack of the enemy. You have to be prepared and know what that means. So Jesus said that he has, he said to you, it has been given to know, to know 
the secrets of the kingdom. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the secrets of the kingdom. You know something the world does not know. Because Jesus said in his word, we didn't give it, I didn't give it to the world, I gave it to the church. That's important. Another thing you need to know right up front is you need to know that Satan has blinded the minds of the unbeliever. And so why do I say that? Because sometimes you're fighting an unbeliever and you're fighting with natural tools when you need spiritual tools. And we're gonna talk about that tonight. We're gonna talk about the differences between them. What advances you in the battle and what causes you to lose the battle? The Bible tells us above everything. Now listen carefully. It says above everything, get wisdom. That's why you're joining me, Annette, Booty, and Rachel. That's why you're on this call tonight. That's why you're on this Bible study tonight. Because the word of God says to get wisdom. And where do we find the wisdom? We find it straight from the word of God. That's why you and I need to spend time together. Spiritual warfare. Tonight, we're going to go over five keys to spiritual warfare. We're going to go over what is spiritual warfare and what is not spiritual warfare. You need to know both. We need to, you need to know what a stronghold is. You need to know how to fight in the realm of of the spirit you can fight all day in the natural and if you're fighting a spiritual battle with natural tools you've already lost the battle that's so important friends you're gonna learn what you're to wear in a battle and I do mean that literally <laughs> um, you're gonna learn what your tools are in a battle when you're in a spiritual battle listen friends and Rachel, you will know this, I'm sure, but when you're in a spiritual battle, the first thing you wanna do is get your praise music going. I'm not kidding. Praise music as David, King David knew when he played the, the, the flute for um, King Saul. I, I want you to know because, because in any warfare, praise and worship goes first. So that's one of your tools. That's that's I'm ahead of myself. But also, you want to know too. Uh, what is a sluggish spirit? And now, friends, listen. I have gone through this, and I have lived this. There's been times in my life when my spirit is so in tune that I can see things. I can know things that are going to happen. I can know. I can pick up on things that are important to pay attention to. I can see problems sometimes before they hit through prayer, through dreams, through the word, through revelation. And then sometimes I'm sluggish. Do you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes when you're sluggish in your spirit, you can't really, you're not aware, you're not alert, you're not in tune, in tune with the spirit. And see, the spirit of God that lives inside of you is here for you and I to guide us through life, to direct us, to teach us. That's what the word tells you. So if, your whole, if the Holy Spirit in you is trying to teach you and you are sluggish in your spirit, then you can't possibly, you can't possibly, hey Tammy, welcome. You can't possibly know what to do if you're sluggish in spirit. And so I want to talk about that too tonight, because if you're in the midst of a battle and you don't even know you're in a battle, how are you going to fight the battle? Spiritual battle is real. And I'm going to prove it to you tonight. Next thing we're going to talk about is can, can a, a Satan stop a Christian? Can he stop you in your ministry? Can he stop you from advancing in your uh, discipleship? Yes, he can. Yes, he can, and uh, Apostle Paul proves that. How do you know? We're going to talk about how do you know you're in the midst of a spiritual battle? How do you know? That's important because you might just think this is a lot of bad luck that's just falling on you, and you give in to the bad luck. You give in to the situation. I'm done. It's, it's over. If you give in and you don't fight the battle, you have lost. Friends, it's so important. And I, I see this all the time. I see spiritual warfare going on in homes and wives who are, are plotted against husbands and husbands against wives. Nobody's praying. Everybody's giving up.
That's a prime example of a spiritual battle that I'm telling you, it's quick to notice. When your home is being shaken and a wife and a, a husband, is a, they're going head to head, you know Satan is right in the middle of it. You better get your tools ready. Or perhaps it's your children. What if the attack is at your children? And you get a bad report. It's a medical report. And you, you just, okay, the doctors know what to do. I don't know what to do. No. You have to discern whether you're truly in a spiritual battle. Not every, not every sickness is a spiritual battle. But if you're not keen to a, a, and aware and alert, you might give in to the very thing that Satan is sending to destroy your home or destroy your ministry or to destroy your children and you're oblivious to it all and not even fighting back. Okay, so how do we recognize the battle? All right, so first thing, I, I just want to give you a few things to, to kind of alert you to some things that I've personally been through. When things do not make sense, all, all of a sudden, what is normal is no longer normal and things don't make sense. That's an indication. When there's great confusion, when there's great transition, when there's great misunderstanding, whether it's with your boss, with a, a friend, with a family member, when, when you say something and, and they don't hear what you're saying and they say something and you didn't hear what they said, that confusion is spiritual warfare and you need to be alert and aware and step back. So tonight we're talking about spiritual battles, recognizing them. Uh, when you uh, can accomplish small tasks that are normal for you to accomplish, that might be an indication of a spiritual battle. And I'm talking about simple things that you would normally do that you're now struggling to do. Um, uploading, you know, information or, or calling someone and you, you know, over and over and over and they normally would be there to answer. I mean, there, there's, there's times that you have to stop and pray and say, God, what's going on here? And I am, I'm not a believer that you're constantly in a battle. I don't believe that. I do believe that Satan sends us into battle at times for specific reasons and specific plans. He can see God's plan and he wants to thwart the plan. And we saw that even at the birth of Jesus, we're coming into Christmas and Herod was there to kill Jesus before he had a chance because he knew he was king. So what plans are the devil trying to stop you from moving forward in? That's spiritual battle. Unexplained illnesses can be a, a, a symptom of, an unex, uh, of a spiritual battle. Sudden and unexplained accidents. Like if you have a child that is accident prone, or perhaps you are, you know, you're constantly falling over things or, you know, you're, you're getting hurt. It just weird things that are unexplainable. That can be a sign that you're in a spiritual battle. Suicidal thoughts are. Compulsive, obsessive thoughts or actions can be a spiritual battle. A lot of those are internal. What about a spiritual battle if you're getting fired from your job for something you did not do? That's a spiritual battle. What if you've held a, a position in your church and all of a sudden, people are turning against you and they want you out of that position. And nothing in your world has changed. That's a spiritual battle. So what I'm saying is all of these examples may not be a spiritual battle, but a lot of times they are examples of spiritual battles. And you have to discern uh, barrenness. Now, please listen to me. Barrenness can be because of a health issue, but barrenness can also be an attack of Satan, the demonic realm that tries to thwart the birth of the child that you are destined to have. That can be a spiritual battle. Not all barrenness is a spiritual battle.
But if you're not clued in, if you're not asking the question, if you're not understanding your current situation, then you don't know what to fight. And that's the, that's the, the, that's the principle here. I want you to get your Bibles, and we're not going to read this whole scripture, but I do want to look at 2 Kings 6, 12. And I, the, this, is, this is the story in scripture where Elisha, who was the, the um, protege of Elijah, and Elisha had been very keen in his spiritual discernment. He knew what was going to happen. And the Israelites were in battle, and this king um, of Israel was told by Elisha exactly what the enemy was going to do. Now, friends, how would you like it if you had in your hearing the voice of God directing you that you knew what the enemy was going to do before he did it? You can do that. I mean, there's times you can do that. The word of God says, but Elisha, the prophet who was in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. So the king, go, go, find him, capture him. <laughs> so they sent an enemy into the city. And this is the first lesson. Please hear me. You write this down. Take a note. The enemy, now listen cl clearly. The enemy will use darkness like a cloak. You don't know you're about to be attacked. I'm telling you, he's king. The word of God, as I just read in Jeremiah, God says, ask me and I will tell you great and mighty things, things you did not know. That's what the word says. So if you don't ask God, why is he going to tell you? So in other words, the enemy comes, he comes in a cloak of darkness. He comes when you least expect it and he comes prepared to fight you whether you're ready to fight or not. Okay, so then the servant of the man of God got up and he went out the, early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. This is what Elisha said. Do not be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now listen, when you're in a battle, I'm telling you straight from the word of God, this is powerful lessons. I'm so excited because listen, when you're in the midst of a battle, here's what you and I do. We look at that battle and we say, oh my goodness, it's me against the world. We feel like we are alone in the battle. Elisha is telling his servant, there's more with us than with the enemy. Now, how would you like to have eyes to see those horses on the hill? Those warriors that surrounded that city in the realm of the spirit. Now, hear me. It wasn't in the realm of the natural. So you have to have spiritual eyes to see. If you don't have the spiritual eyes to see, you need to ask God. If you really believe the word of God, which God will show you in his word, because he did with his servants. Here, the prophet, he said, do not be afraid. That brings me to point number two, fear. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. Fear will cause you to lose the battle before the battle even begins. Did you hear me? Fear will cause you to lose the battle before the battle even begins. So now listen, you have to, when you're in the midst of a battle, you have to realize Satan will come, the enemy. He'll come in darkness. He'll come like a cloak, cloaked in darkness. You won't even know you're being attacked. You'll have to sit back and think, what is going on here? Then the second thing he's going to do is he's going to, he's going to send fear to you. Because if you give in to that fear, then you've already lost the battle. You cannot give in to fear when you're being attacked. 
Okay, then, then point number three, we're talking about spiritual battle. We're looking at Elisha and how did Elisha with such confidence teach and train a servant? One, don't be afraid. Two, look, look on the mountain. There, there's more of us than of them. In other words, you're not in this alone. God is with you. He is with you. And he's got a host of angels ready and waiting. And you have to ask him. So what did Elisha do? Listen, verse 17. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. So I pray that right now for you. God, open each and every woman listening. Open their spiritual eyes so that they might see. And the, the word says this, then the Lord opened the servant's eye and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Now, I don't know about you, friends. I want that kind of prayer power. <laughs> I want that kind of prayer power. And listen, there's been times in my life when the Lord has allowed me to see in the spirit. I've seen things that, you know, would, would be hard to really explain. It, it's, it's, it's the depth of experience that God takes a willing heart through so that we can better teach and we can better fight. So I want you to hear me. Sometimes God will open your spiritual eyes because you're going into to a battle and you need to be able to see. So if, if you have not prayed this prayer, I ask that you pray it. I ask that you ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes so that you might see. What we take away from this is what Elisha did. The first thing he did is prayed. He prayed. Prayer brings us to our point number three. Prayer is a tool in the spiritual to battle in the realm of the natural. Now, friends, listen, that's, that's critical. That is critical. So I'm going to say it again. And if you have questions, friends, please ask them. If you have questions, please ask. Even if you're watching later and want to send me an email, shoot me a, an inbox message, please do. Prayer is a spiritual tool to battle in the natural. We have no other tools. I mean, you know, in the natural, that will take on a spiritual battle. I mentioned one earlier, prayer, praise and worship is a spiritual tool. We know that from scripture and it pushes back the enemy. The, the enemy doesn't want to be in a place where God is being honored, where God is being worshiped, where God is being praised. So it cleanses the atmosphere. And I know some of you jumped on earlier today um, at seven when I first did the, um, announcement that I'd be speaking tonight on spiritual warfare. And I know some of you are going to jump on later um, because this is your, your passion too. I know some of you, I know what you've been through and I know you need to know how to fight spiritual battles. So here we see Elisha and Elisha went into prayer. So we know that prayer is an important tool of uh, the church to fight in the spirit realm, the natural battle we find ourselves in. Listen, fasting is another tool. So we've talked about fasting, prayer, worship, and praise. Fasting is critical if you're going to fight in the realm of the spirit. You, you, I'm telling you, if you've got a big battle ahead of you, go into fasting. And I'm not talking about fasting TV. I'm talking about fasting food. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the daily sus substance that you need to live. That's the kind of fast that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a biblical fast, a day, three days, you know, 10 days or 40 days. And even that needs to be directed by your time of prayer with the Lord. Let him direct you. Just don't assume. And if you're not capable, if you're sick and you can't do a fast, don't push that. You pray to the Lord and ask him. Okay, so, so then the scripture says this. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed, 
to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Now listen, friends, you know, some people will say, oh, don't pray things like that. No, when the enemy is coming at you, you better be in tune to pray what the Holy Spirit puts in your heart to pray. And you know, you don't want to see, you don't want to see people hurt. And I'm not talking about praying against people. I'm talking about praying against our enemy. And you have to know who your enemy is because it's not people. The word of God tells us that it is powers and, and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So we need to know where our battle lies. So God will move in the natural from what has been asked to do in the supernatural. In other words, what we just saw in scripture, God will move when you request him to move, blind the eyes of the enemy God, tie the hands of the enemy, don't let them touch my children. And I, again, I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. I bind the hands of the enemy in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I bind the hands of the enemy. We have to be forceful. The word of God says to enter into the throne of grace boldly. It doesn't mean set back and whine. It means take spiritual authority and tell God what you want him to do. Get your hands, Satan, off of my children. Get your hands, Satan, off of my marriage. Get your hands off of my house. In the name of Jesus, I demand it. I bind the forces of enemy of the enemy. See, that's that's the kind of prayer that honors God. That's the kind of prayer that says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I am so tired of the devil taking from me things that belong to me. Are you tired? See, we've got to get that fighting mentality because if you don't realize you're in a battle, you're not going to fight it. You're not going to win it. I need you to join me in these, in these times of warfare prayer. The church is on a decline because there's people in the pews that don't even believe what is written. Okay, so we see that God will move in the natural from what's been asked to do in the supernatural. In other words, if you want God to move, you better be praying. It just doesn't happen. You've got to ask him. You've got to ask him. Alicia told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. And I will lead you to the man you're looking for. And he led them to Samaria. Next point out of this scripture. God will give you a word. He will give you direction. He will, he will tell you this is not the way to go. He will show you where to, to take you. Maybe you're looking for a new job. Maybe you're per, perhaps thinking about a move. Uh, maybe you're asking the Lord if you should take a certain position. Maybe you're thinking about being in ministry or, or, or serving in some capacity because we're all in ministry and we're all supposed to be serving. Uh, God will give you the sight to see, the direction of what to do, and where to go. Now listen, I'm telling you the truth. I've been through this. I've been through this over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. But if you will trust what the Word of God says and what it teaches, more importantly, it teaches clearly, you and I, it teaches us that God will lead us. He will give us sight. I read that at the beginning. I will tell you great and mighty things you did not know. Okay, so after they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and they were inside Samaria. So again, Elisha has an ongoing conversation with God. Ongoing. It's a prayer that he's, he's asking God, blind their eyes, open their eyes. And there's, there's times when you can ask God, God, shield my children's eyes from things like pornography. Shield them. Shield my husband's eyes. You know, we need to be praying that. 
We need to be praying that regularly because listen, the enemy comes and he comes looking all enticing. He lures us. He, he pulls on us. Pride of life, the pride of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Those are our problems. <laughs> So, so we, again, we need to learn that prayer is warfare and it's critical. It's critical. Um, so first of all, you need to know, as we're talking about spiritual warfare, is spiritual warfare real? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We're, we're learning through scripture that, that warfare is real. Um, you think about, about Paul when he was walking through um, the city, uh, I think it was in Philippians. Um, anyway, the, the, the uh, woman who was a prophetess and she was not of God and she was saying, these men are the, of the most high God. You know, these men are holy men. And, and Apostle Paul turned around and rebuked the spirit of divination in her to silence her because she was a mocking divination, spirit of divination. And so he didn't fight the woman, he fought the spirit in the woman. Do, do you understand that? Listen, Apostle Paul was as much man and he's as much man as a man is today. He was not God, he was not half God, he's not half deity, he is all man like you and I are men and women, we're just plain old women, nothing special, but God uses us in special ways if we are willing. Now here's, I told you that I was gonna prove to you through scripture that spiritual warfare is real. Revelation 12, 13 through 17 says this, but the war earth helped the woman and opened its mouth to swallow up the river that had poured, been poured from the dragon's mouth Listen carefully. And the dragon was enraged at the woman and went to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. Whoa. You and I. Are the rest of the children. Satan is the dragon. The dragon was enraged at the woman. And you and I are the children of that woman. The birth of the church. We are it. Satan has a target against you and I. And if you if you believe it or don't believe it, it really doesn't matter. It's going to happen anyway. So the word of God, like I said before, get wisdom above all things, get wisdom. Jesus uh, taught this lesson when he was speaking to Nicodemus, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Now I wanna repeat that, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Remember when he was talking to Nicodemus and, and he said the wind blows where it wishes and you don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going, right? Isn't that what he says? But it's there. It is there. So you hear it sound, but you don't know where it's going. And that's, that's, the, that's the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the new birth. That's um, the realm of the spirit, the re spirit realm. We don't see it, but just because we don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Angels are real. Maybe you've seen one, maybe you haven't. They're real regardless. Demons are real, whether you've seen it or you haven't seen it. So we need to understand that just because you cannot see it doesn't mean that it's not real. S spiritual warfare is real. Okay, the word of God says this, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now listen, friends, we know that. We're in the kingdom of light and this is the kingdom of darkness over here. But I just read to you where Satan, the dragon, comes to attack those who 
believe in the hold the do the commandments of God and hold fast and believe in Jesus. That's who he comes after. So spiritual warfare, now listen, it is not freedom from Satan's control over us. You've already won that battle. That was accomplished at the cross. Do you hear me? You've already won that battle. Spiritual warfare is not the fight for freedom from Satan's control over us. It's already done. But you got to know that or you can be in bondage. Spiritual warfare is fighting for the freedom for Jesus to be lifted up, praise and worship, and the power of the Holy Spirit to freely flow so that you hear and see, because Jesus said that when he's lifted up, he would draw all men unto him. We lift up Jesus, we praise him, praise you Jesus. I told my husband one time, I said, you know, if I ever get to the point where I can't hold up my hand, I want you to tie it up. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm in the midst of really ugly things, some bitter, bitter battle that I'm going through, I will hold my hand up and I'll say, God, you know, you know that I don't feel like praising, but this hand and this heart is going to praise you. See, sometimes Satan wants to get us so discouraged, we don't even lift up Jesus. So in other words, your, one of your greatest tools is lifting up Jesus when you're fighting spiritual battles. Lift him up, praise him, honor him, give him glory, give him recognition. Say, I remember when, God. Pray, pray with confidence, pray with boldness, pray with the understanding that the warfare has already been won. You just have to walk it out. The battle has already been won. You just have to walk it out. It's pushing back forces of darkness to bring truth where there's been deception. Pushing back the powers of darkness and the forces of deception and bringing truth into that place. Listen, most of us get into spiritual battles inwardly because we believe a lie from the enemy. That's number one. Some of us get in battles externally because God has an assignment and a mission and Satan doesn't like it because he knows it. And he's going to send you every demon in hell to try to stop you from moving into your destiny. Listen, friends, it's real. I cannot tell you every time I make a move forward, there's an attack that comes first and I I get to the place like I feel like I cannot function anymore. I just can't. When I wrote No Regrets, I was on the book tour. I lost six family members and a pet within four months. You might have heard that story. That's warfare. That is serious, serious warfare. I mean, when my, when my precious little puppy lost his life, her life, Satan was coming. And I was even pre-warned. I was pre-warned. I, I knew something was going to happen. And at my, I, was, I was sluggish in spirit that day. That's what I want to talk about too, sluggish in spirit. Okay, so what spiritual warfare is, it's freeing those who are held captive to oppression, domination, and possession that they might be liberated from the thing that has distanced them from God through the truth of his word and the power of the work of the cross. Now that's a lot. Again, I'm talking about solid food is for the mature. This is solid meat. This is not light, light and fluffy. This is as solid as you get. <laughs> so freeing people who are captive to oppression, we can be oppressed. Depression is an oppression. We can be depressed by all kinds of mindsets. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. You know, we've been through all of those. And, you know, thank God we can raise, raise ourselves above that because we believe the world. Okay, so that's the internal junk. You can also be a possession. Possession, a Christian can never be possessed of a demon. Possession is ownership. Possession can only occur in the non-believer. Believers can be oppressed when they believe a lie, when they don't know the truth. For me, it was fear. I thought it was my personality. I've talked about that a thousand times. 
And when God showed me that it was not his intent for me, the light bulb came on and fear had to go. So, so in other words, you need to discern in your own heart, are you fighting an internal battle or an external battle? Is this something that you have to deal with in the mind or is this something coming against you or your family? You have to discern that. What kind of battle? So it's, it's, it's freeing those held in captivity, oppression or possession. You know, there will be times when the one word of God, one scripture will break through the heart of a non-believer and their whole life will radically change. There will be one word you share with someone that sets them in a place of healing and deliverance. Okay, so positionally, we are free. Hear me. Jesus said, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You're free. You're free. You're free from it all. Now, listen, just because the word says you're free and Jesus did the work doesn't mean that functionally you're free. You can functionally, you can be bound. So we're talking about internal battles right now. You can be bound to addictions. You can be bound to um, drugs, pornography, alcohol, sex, um, promiscuous sex, you know, anything that is against God's word, you can be bound to those things. You can still be a believer in Jesus Christ, but not walking in the freedom that he came to give you. And you have to determine in your heart to believe he whom the son sets free is free indeed. That will help begin to pull you out of that place of bondage. But so for that place, a, a false be belief becomes a foothold. A foothold becomes a stronghold. A stronghold becomes legal ground for Satan to harass, torment, or discourage. Now listen, all of us go through this. All of us at some point in time, we give in to our emotions instead of standing on his word. And we're going to get to that, I hope. <laughs> so when a strong man is present, you have relinquished your own will over to that strong man. And that strong man is a place where the enemy has gained a foothold in you. But God says this, when he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. That's what the word says. So in other words, it, whether it's an internal battle that you're fighting or an external battle that Satan has come to steal, steal kill, and destroy something you have. Kill, steal, or destroy your children's future, your finances, your home, your health. You know, these battles you have to recognize. So how do we, who do we fight? First of all, you have to know. You have to know that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but again, with rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers in this present darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who you fight. Well, how do you, how do you fight that? You know, I mean, as we're thinking about the forces of evil, how do you fight that? Let's say somebody's coming to steal your husband. Whew. You better know how to fight. <laughs> I mean, really, seriously, or your children. Okay, so how you fight that is, you, one, you recognize you're in a real battle. Two, you go by those, those things, those first five principles that we talked about. You have to open, pray that God's open your spiritual eyes to see and to understand you're not in this alone. There's more of us than there are of them. You have to understand that God will give you the directives. He will tell you where to go, what to do, how to do it. But you have to rely on him. You can't do this on your own. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing about fighting a battle. Okay, so the word of God tells us to be strong in the Lord and in his might, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. You have to stand. Listen, when, the, when we talked about this at the very beginning, the first thing Satan does is he sends fear. You want to run. And you have to understand you cannot, that you have to learn how to stand in the midst of the battle. You cannot run. You know, a soldier, when they go to that front line, they're not running back. They're not running back. They're, they're moving forward or they're standing in their position. 
So, and that's to stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but it's against rulers, authorities, powers, and uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. If you're fighting man, you're fighting the wrong thing. You've already lost, no matter what the man is doing. So, okay, so we're, we're talking about putting on the full armor of God, and I'm going to quickly run through these because we only have 10 minutes and we're up. Gosh, and I have so much more to share. But the belt of truth, you got to know what the word says. If you don't know what truth is, you can't, you can't possibly be girded in truth. And girded in truth, that belt is going to keep you up. It's going to keep you standing in the midst of a battle. The breastplate of righteousness, not yours. You don't have enough righteousness, and neither do I. The breastplate of righteousness is the righteousness that Jesus has already given us, his robe of righteousness. So you better stand in that, and you better know it's his righteousness, not yours, because the devil will come and he'll whisper in your ear, who do you think you are? You're not this or you're not that. And then you'll get weak need. Yeah, who am I to stand against all this? So you have to be put on that breastplate of righteousness, knowing it's Jesus' righteousness, not your own. Your feet need to be uh, shod with the peace of the gospel. You got to be ready. Fitted for readiness. I love that version. Fitted for re readiness that comes from a gospel of peace. In other words, your feet better be ready to march and you better be ready to march with the gospel of peace. In other words, when the devil comes, you have to be willing to move forward into the enemy's territory and you need to say what God says and mean what God says and believe what God says because your words get you nowhere. The shield of faith. Now, without faith, you cannot please God, but this is what the word says. It says it, ex it extinguishes all of the flaming arrows, flaming arrows. So, you know, as, as the devil shoots at you, those flaming arrows, and I'm telling you, it can hurt. People will come out of the woodwork and they'll say the worst things about you. People that's been your friend, or you'll have someone that, that wants to fire you or get you out and you've been nothing but a loyal servant. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You have to, you have to put up that shield of faith and you have to speak God's word. And then you take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Salvation is, are you 100% sure you're saved? Not 50, not 75, not 90. You've got to be 100%. Why do I say that? The word of God says you, you can know. And also, if you don't know, the devil's going to play. He's going to wreak havoc on you. So you have to know what the word says. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the word of God says you will be saved. The end of story. That's the end. So in other words, you have to put on the helmet. You have to have the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he fought Satan face, face on by the word. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. And we've talked about that before. And then you have to pray in the spirit with all kinds of prayers and requests. Listen, you better let the Holy Spirit pray. And I'm not, I'm talking about when you will know, when you relinquish your power, your authority over to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes control of your mouth, your eyes, your ears, your heart. And you just, you just let him, I've, I have heard myself. I mean, I mean, all kinds of prayers. So you can pray all kinds of prayers. And I've heard myself pray things that I've said, oh, no, I, no, no, wait a minute. I didn't even want to pray that kind of prayer because it took such boldness and such confidence and such faith. And see, the Satan is the, the, the father of lies. And that's what he does. He, he uses his fiery darts to come at you, your head and your thinking, your heart and your emotions. He tries to come at you in your, your understanding of the word or lack of understanding. So you need to truly be dressed and ready for battle. And if you're not, listen, doubt in the faithfulness of God or in the faithfulness of his word make you totally ineffective. Even your prayers won't go through because God says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So you have to understand what the word says and be prepared and ready to fight this battle with scripture. God said, Jesus said, it is written. And so when you put on the helmet of salvation and you put in on, you know, the, the uh, shield of faith, 
and you then you're you're protecting you're protecting yourself and the word of god which is the only offensive weapon you have you strike out with the word of god if you don't speak the word then you're you're you know if you just pray your and i i do that a lot you know i'll just pray my attitude or my heart or my passion but there are times in warfare that you get that word and you speak it out and that's so important in warfare um, so I'm going to close on this. Be alert. Pray and be alert. A sluggish spirit. Now listen carefully. A sluggish spirit. And I, there's been times when I've had this. Does not discern. A sluggish spirit does not pray. A sluggish spirit does not engage in warfare. But gives in to the battle at hand. So I want to pray for you and we're going to close. Heavenly Father, I just come before you, gracious King. And for all of those precious women, God, that are listening now and that intend to lis listen later. Father, I am asking you to give them spiritual eyes to see and a spiritual ears to hear and an understanding in their heart. God, your word says that you will show us great and mighty things we did not know. So we ask you, God, in this time of warfare, that you give us a knowing and a confidence, God, as we come boldly before the throne of grace, that there are more of us than there are of them. And Father, help us to understand that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Help us, God, to pray in the Spirit at all times. Help us to use the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal, but are divine and mighty for pulling down strongholds. God, help us as we move through this battle that we're coming up into or the battle that we are in right now, God, help us to discern what to do. Help us to practice to discern between good and evil so that we will be well prepared. Father, when these things don't make sense, when we're struggling, when there's so much confusion, when we're losing things, when Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy, we ask you, Father, to raise your banner and fight on our behalf. God, we ask you to send forth your holy angels to war on behalf of our families, on behalf of our children, on behalf of our health, our finances. God, we call forth those holy angels this very night, and we ask you, God, as we plead the blood of Jesus over our families, over our children, over our homes, we ask you to war on behalf of us. God, everything the devil has tried to strip away, everything he's tried to steal, God, we ask you, Father, to return what the enemy has taken. God, I ask your hand of favor to be on these women. I ask you, God, shine your favor into their hearts this very night. Call them into the next work that you have prepared for them. We give you glory and honor and praise this night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something from it. I know that I did, uh, even as I'm reading those scriptures. So thank you for joining. Thank you for praying. Thank you for standing with us. I want you to pray for us as we pray for you. And just believe that God is doing a miraculous work and that he's teaching and training us how to be warriors on behalf of his kingdom. We love you and we appreciate you and we thank you for joining us. Please join us every Tuesday night, same time, 8 o'clock here Eastern, 8 o'clock Eastern, right on this page. You won't see this teaching anywhere else. It's specific to our ladies that we want to spend this time with. So thanks again and we love you. Have a great night, ladies. Good night.